Jesus. There we go. We got some sound. Hallelujah. Give God glory. Give him praise. Forever. I love that. I love that. So uh, for those that do not know who I am, um, my name is Brandon Kellum. I am one of the ministers here at Kingdom Life Christian Church, and I have the privilege of bringing the Word of God today. Yeah. So I do want to take a moment to uh, thank um, our Bishop Jay Ramirez, as well as our fly Pastor Marco over here. Isn't he fly? Listen, I love his heart, amazing heart of God, but yo, you are so fly too, sir. I just want to thank you for the, um, for, for the opportunity, right, and the trust to come up here to deliver the Word of God today. So who has been here for the past couple of weeks hearing Pastor Marco's message about sensitivity to the Holy Spirit? Let me hear a clap. Let me hear something. It's been fire, absolute fire. If you haven't heard, make sure you go back on YouTube and you check that out. Um, today, I intend to bring a message that pairs very well with sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, right? If you're going to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you got to interact with God, right? You got to spend time with Him. You got to talk to Him. Today, we're going to talk about prayer. You guys okay with talking about prayer? We're going to learn about prayer. We're going to teach about prayer. You're going to be encouraged about prayer. And so today's scripture is found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. You might as well turn there now or uh, open up your phone and scroll there, whatever method you use. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. I'm bringing it old school. Today, I'm going to read out of the New King James Version, right? The New King James Version. Bring it old school. So while you guys are turning there, I want to give you a little bit of a background. So that scripture um, is actually titled the Lord's Prayer. Um, just a bit of a background. So Jesus' disciples, right, the ones that he's pouring into, he is, they're, 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 they're watching him. And Jesus is just rocking and rolling. He's laying hands on the sick. They're being healed. Jesus is going into the synagogues and he's preaching with power. They're seeing the world turned upside down. And they're also watching Jesus pray. If you ever notice when you read um, the Gospels, that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, oftentimes you will see Jesus who be doing ministry and people just will be flooding him. They'll be coming for him and they want to, and he's there, he's laying hands and he's giving hope and encouragement. But then it says he snuck off to a quiet place by himself to pray. It will go as far as Jesus said. It says that um, Jesus went to a mountain to go spend time with God. And his disciples were seeing this. And in Luke chapter 11, I'm not sure which disciple asked this question. I'm so glad they did. They were watching. They was there with Jesus while they were praying. And somehow I was like, Jesus. I'm not sure who it was. Maybe it was... Uh, one of the disciples, right? We, we wouldn't call him a disciple, disciple uh, Matthew, whatever, right? Matthew's like, Jesus, can you teach us how to pray? I'm so glad he asked that question. So let's all read together. This is the response that Jesus gave them, which we're going to read out of Matthew. And I hope that you're all there because I want us to read together. It reads, our Father in heaven, read with me, let me hear you. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all of who you are. We thank you for all that you have done. Father, we ask today, we all gather together, right? We come today to be equipped. We come today to hear a word from you. 
We come to be set free. We come for so many reasons. Jesus, I ask that you just meet my brothers and sisters right where they are in this room and online. Father, may you speak a word that breaks the yoke. May you speak a word that inspires. We pray this in your holy name. We all say? In the chat, go ahead and say amen. Type amen in the chat as well. So, Jesus was giving some instructions, right, on how to pray. Me, myself specifically, it's going to sound weird. I'm actually into instructions and directions. Low-key is kind of my thing. If you give me a bookshelf or a desk from Ikea, I'm going to put that thing together. I'm your guy, no problem. It won't be no parts left over. I'm going to have everything laid out nice and neat, and I'll have my instructions right in front of me. Step one. All right, all right, step two. I know what step two is, but I'm still going to read it. Step two. That's me. I like that. And so because of that, um, I have a propensity. I kind of lean towards baking. Because baking is one of those skills that you got to what? Follow instructions. You got to follow directions, right? So when I was younger, I, you know, I used to bake more than what I did right now. My, my baby, my wife, Sabichi, would love me to bake more, but you know. Not so much lately. But when I was younger, I used to bake all the time. And so I got a bit comfortable, got a bit confident. And it was a ceviche, and I was our first Easter married. And I said, I'm going to make the peach cobbler. Oh, and I'm excited, right? I got the ingredients. I went shopping. I got everything. When it came to cook this peach cobbler, as I said, I was being a little overly confident. It didn't go so well for me. You know, I didn't follow the direction. I think the pan was too small. I put too much of this. I wasn't following like I should. And when it was time for the peach collar to be done, I pulled it out the oven. Let's show the people what it looked like. I can show you better than I can tell you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say, it tasted as bad as it looked as well. (laughs) Speechy, can you attest? I tried to eat it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> couldn't do it. That's what happens when we don't follow directions. That's what happens when we don't follow instructions. You can have an idea of what you want to do and where you want to go, but if you are not following, you're going to go left. You're going to miss the mark. How much more when Christ Jesus himself is teaching us and telling us how to pray, should we listen? So for those that are out there, for those that are taking notes, and I advise everyone to take notes, are in this room, are you online, take notes. Because we believe that God is speaking. We believe that, that there's an equipping happening. And the Holy Spirit, as Pastor Mark was, has spoke about, he speaks to us. And if you're not capturing what he says, you can lose it. So for those that are taking notes, today's message is entitled, Lord, teach us how to pray. Lord, teach us how to pray. Now, the Bible gives several different methods of prayer, right? When we read, we have the intercession prayer, the prayer of intercession. That's when we pray for one another or for another person. We have the fervent prayer or or, or the passionate prayer. I I tend to lean into that one a little bit more if you ever heard me pray. I kind of lean into that vein. But, But there's the fervent, passionate prayer, right? There's the persistent prayer that the Bible talks about. There's corporate prayer, that when we all come together, when more than one person come together to pray for something, the Bible talks about how it multiplies. There's a corporate prayer. There's all different types of prayer that the Bible tells us, and also the Bible tells us how not to pray, right? Talks about babbling and talk about repeating over and over again, talking about standing in the synagogues because you love to be seen and love to be heard. But here in in the Lord's Prayer, it's a little bit different. It's less of a method that Jesus is giving the people. They they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Jesus taught them what to pray. Jesus gave them a framework, a heart posture of prayer. And how powerful, because there's only a couple of scriptures. But yet, literally, if you break this thing down, each prayer, 
point literally can be a message all on its own. We can teach on the Lord prayer for several months easily. I'm going to, to attempt to do that in one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say buckle in because we're going to fly. Make sure you take notes and you get to study it because we're going to go fast. And so as I said, I broke these things down. As I mentioned before, I love instructions, right? I love steps. So I broke it down into six steps. So we'll go over six steps to praying like Jesus. You can write there right on the top. Six steps to praying like Jesus. Step one is found in Matthew 6, 9. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Step number one, we got to know who God is, and we have to know who we are. When we go into prayer, the starting point, the first place Jesus told us to go is to know who God is and to know who we are. So Jesus called God our Father. He could have called him so many things. But he identified God when it comes to prayer as our father. Now, identifying God as our father, what it does, it affects our approach, right? It kind of changes the approach. If you feel that God is an angry person, angry king that is waiting for you to mess up, and as soon as you do, he's going to whack you, You're going to approach him in that way, in that method. If you feel that God is a disapproving God who you cannot measure up to and he's waiting to stick you out, once again, if you even do approach him, that's how you're going to do it. But God is saying that, no, God is our father. He's not my father that lives down in Maryland. He's not the guy that raised you, right? Though your father may have done a good job, he said that this father, he lives where? saying that it's our Father God. And our Father God is a perfect God. And the fact that we call him our Father, that means that our God is loving, that our God we serve, that he is an intimate God. That when you read in the scriptures, in the story of the prodigal son, he's a God that looks and waits for you to come. He anticipates it. He wants it. This is us. This is when we go to pray, when we go to spend time with God, we got to recognize that he is our father. Now, this is the cool part. If God calls himself a father, he's a, he's a king, right? And he rules and he holds all things. That's our father. And if that is our father, that makes us our sons and daughters. We are God's sons and daughters. We are the family of God. You are my brothers and sisters. And if my God is a father, that makes me a prince. If my God is is a ruler, that means that I rule under him. I have authority under him. It changes my mindset. It changes my expectation. I am no longer lowly. I can be humble. Humility, Humility just means that I'm not saying I'm better than you. Humility says that, God, I am under you. We don't have to be meek and small. We are princes. We are princesses, and our Father is a king. Our Father in heaven. It says, hallowed be that name. Hallowed means holy. Means holy. Holy be our name. What does this word holy mean? We say it a lot, right? Holy means set apart. Saying that God is set apart, that God is different from everything and everyone else, that our God is perfect. I like this word perfect. Essentially, when we think of perfection from human standards, perfection is something that has to be worked into. It has to be built up, right? Us as humans, we are novice when we head into something. We practice. We learn. We we keep doing it over and over again till we reach a, a high level of mastery. And we call that perfection, right? So we become proficient at something. And then as time goes on, we begin to decline in our proficiency. This is not the perfect we're talking about with God. God didn't, did not become perfect. He is perfect. He is complete. There is nothing that can be added to God, and there's nothing that can be taken away from him. God doesn't have to work into this thing. Like, for instance, 
We, 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 we sing about and we talk about how God has power. I'm going to say something. God does not have power. God is power. You see, you see the difference? You see the difference? The Bible says that God is love. So what essentially what it's saying is saying that God doesn't just have love, that he is love. And he is the distributor of this power, distributor of this love. You got to know your God. You got to know your father. Our God, he has all authority, right? He doesn't just have authority. He doesn't have to have troops to maintain his authority. He is authority. He doesn't have resources. He is the resource. Let's put this together. What do we got? This is just one sentence. Like This is one verse. Pastor Marco, I'm going to go fast after this one. This is important, though. This is an anchoring point of everything. Knowing who God is, knowing who you are, is going to affect when you pray. It's going to affect the way you live. It's going to affect every single thing. It's an anchoring point. Let's, let's put it together. Let's put it together. So God is a loving, intimate father who doesn't just love you, he likes you, and he wants to talk to you, and he enjoys you. And this loving God, this loving father is, has all authority, all power, all resources, all might. So when we go to our father in prayer, whatever need we have, he is more than sufficient. He's more than sufficient. This is the heart and mindset we need to go into when we have prayer. Step one, know God and know who you are. All right. Step two is found in verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Step number two, you want to write down. We want to build the kingdom of God. This is the second step when it comes to prayer. We want to build the kingdom of God. That sounds lofty. Build the kingdom of God. Right? Let's break this down a little bit. This is the thing. I have often heard people ask, what is our purpose? And I've asked the question as well. What is my purpose? If you as a child of God have not asked that question, I invite you to. If you have not asked that question, actually, you need to. You need to begin to ask God, why am I here? What did you call for me to do? Because our God is a purposeful God. And so in the Bible, it actually begins to lay out what our purpose is. It's actually found in, you can take this note, I'm just going to read it. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, and God has made all things new and reconciled or bring things back. He's brought all things back to himself. And and he had this God, God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. God has given us all the ministry of reconciliation. What does reconciliation mean? What what does it mean to be reconciled? You got to understand, bring back together. I see you. You got to understand what, now, now this is the thing. When you're born on earth, we sin. As human beings, we sin. We miss the mark. We do what God tells us not to do. Sin separates us from God. We are not reconciled with God. We are not together. The Bible says that the wages of sin is what? Death. There's a price to sin that has to be paid. God is a holy, righteous God, and he cannot be in sin in that way. But Jesus Christ... The Son of God was born on this earth, and he died a sinner's death on a cross. And when he died, he paid that price of sin for us. So now, when we believe in Jesus Christ, we put our faith into him. Now, the forgiveness of sin we have through him because he died for our sins. And belief in Jesus Christ, what does it do? It reconciles us back to Christ. So if you are in this room and you are a believer in Christ, if you are online and you are a believer of Christ, you have been reconciled, made one with God. And the Bible says, our 
mission. Every single last believer on this earth from the first person born again until the last. Our mission and our purpose is to do the same thing. is to tell people that Jesus has died for you, for your sins. And bring them one with God through faith in Jesus. That's called the gospel. And that's called preaching the gospel. And that's every one of our jobs. Now, it's going to look different depending on your gifting. It's going to look different. Right, right now, I'm on the pulpit and I'm, I'm preaching a message. Because right now, my functioning role is to equip the body. Equip, you guys, for the work of the what? For the work of the ministry. What is the ministry? The ministry of reconciliation. That's all of our jobs. When was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? When was the last time you, inv- excuse me, you invited somebody to church? Right? Is it enough to come to church on a Sunday and maybe give a tithe and offering. I'm not trying to condemn. I'm trying to encourage. It is very important. Evangelism, right? The sharing of the gospel. It isn't just for a select few. As we read here, it's for everybody. And and what Jesus said is our job is to build the kingdom. Now, a function, another way that we can do to build the kingdom is in prayer, it's through prayer. So, in, in, and it's all throughout the Bible. Jesus, when he was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, when he got, fit, when he got baptized, he went right into the wilderness. What was he doing in, in the wilderness? He was fasting and he was praying. 40 days and 40 nights. When he came out of the wilderness, that actually was the start of his ministry. Let's talk about prayer to build the kingdom some more. In the book of Acts, when they were in the upper room, the, the, uh, the apostles and their family, when they were in the upper room, the Bible says that they were praying constantly when they were together. And that was the space that the Holy Spirit fell out. And that was the start of the church that we know today. That happened through prayer. The building that we're in right now, the, 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 the website that you guys logged on to, Bishop will tell you very plain as day, this entire ministry was built in prayer. So if we got to this point as a ministry, right, the building of the kingdom, if we got to this point through prayer, it only makes sense that the only way we're going to get to the next place is God is bringing us is through prayer. We have to pray to build the kingdom. Now, we have several opportunities as a body for us to come together in prayer. One, Monday nights. Every Monday night, there is a team of people who love Jesus. They're maniacs. I love them. I'm one of them. Every Monday Monday at 7.30, we are here in the building and the doors are open. 1455 Nautilus Avenue for those that are online, if you're able to make it. We have prayer here from 7.30 to 8.30. Come on down. If you cannot make it, log on. We broadcast the prayers where? We want to see this place filled because we're building the kingdom of God. On your heart, if you feel that need to build, there's another opportunity every Sunday morning. We, we're, we gather together here from 9.15 to 9.45, and we are praying for the service, as Pastor Marco talked about earlier. We're praying for the preacher. We're praying for the worship. We're praying for everybody in this room. You are welcome to join that as well. If you do come, you want to come, I'll, I'll be on the left-hand side in that back area. Just come talk to me. I'll get you all situated. There are opportunities of prayer. We have a 24-hour prayer day, which is every fourth Monday. We want to pray to build the kingdom of God. So come out and join us for prayer. Step three is found in verse 11 is give us today our daily bread. It's funny. We just now got to the stuff about us, right? If you notice, the first step was like, all right, you got to hang out with God. You got to know who your father is. Secondly, you got to build the kingdom. Now God is, now it's about you. Give us today our daily bread. Step number three for praying like Jesus is Pray for your needs. It's okay. I know sometimes people don't like to pray. Listen, you better pray for yourself. You want to have a balance. Everything shouldn't about you, but you want to pray for yourself. 
I love that it says pray for your needs. It says pray for your daily bread. It has the vibes. It has the, the connotation that God, he cares for every piece of us and we can depend on him for every one of our needs. The Bible tells us to, to uh, approach it. Jesus says that the kingdom are for those that are as children. The kingdom of God is for, is for those who are actually, we have to be childlike as God. The Bible says have a childlike faith. When I was growing up, my mama, she was the one that kept the food in the refrigerator. I didn't have to worry about going to work to eat food. My mother took care of that. I wasn't working. My mother put clothes on my back, right? I was her child, and she took care of my needs. If you are, are, are in a position where, where your money is funny, you better pray to God. If you are in a position of need, you can pray. If you are already in a space where you're good, you can pray for that next level of your life. Now, God doesn't just take care of your physical needs. He also takes care of your spiritual needs. In 2 Peter, in um, chapter 1, it says, that, it says that God has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness according to the knowledge of Christ. So first of all, you got to get into the Bible. Because it's got to be through the knowledge of Christ. It's not just going to happen. You gotta have to, you're going to have to get into that word. But he takes care of your spiritual needs as well. So important, so important that we lean to God for everything that we need. So make sure that you're going to God in prayer for your physical as well as your spiritual needs. And I love that it said every day. Give us this day. Not yesterday. Give us this day. There's a, there's a story in the Old Testament when the Israelites, they were freed from, the, from Egyptian slavery. And they were in the wilderness. They had no food. No food at all. So what did God do? He rained this stuff. They didn't know what to call it. They called it manna. Manna, right? And this manna said it was sweet and it took care of their needs. And Moses told him clearly, listen, don't try to save it. Don't try to keep it. Because after one day, it's a wrap. Uh, what, did, what did them knuckleheads do? Because we are knuckleheads. We're all knuckleheads. What did they try to do? Some folk tried to save it, and it stunk, and it was disgusting, and it smelled. It was just, no, it was not edible. It's the same way with our provisions from God. We must go to God daily. We are trying to live off an of old, stinky, stale man. God is saying faith is now. We are operating off an old word, off an old revelation, thinking we are doing something. God wants us with them every single day. God is not trying to build robots. He's trying to build a family. And your father wants to hang out with you more than he just wants to give you stuff. But he will give you stuff as well. Don't play games. Praise God. Praise God. All right. So step four. Step four. I'm doing pretty good with time ish, right? I'm doing all right? We getting there. Like I said, we flying though. All right. So, so next step four is found in verse 12. It says, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Forgive our debts and we also forgive our debtors. This ain't talking about Sally Mae. Not talking about Capital One. Not those debtors. <laughs> As I said earlier, the wages of sin is death, right? That's a debt you owe. When you sin, you owe, right? You owe when you sin. So right here, this is, uh, so for those taking note, once again, step four is forgive, forgive, forgive. Forgive, forgive, forgive. So one, the first part of the scripture says, forgive us for our debts or forgive our sins. Can we repent quick? Can we do that fast? We, we, we mess up, right? We all mess up. Can we not just sit in that stuff? Can we get it off of us quick? The Bible talks about, we, we just talked about it. Sin separates us from God. Jesus died. The Bible says that he is faithful and just, that he forgives our sins. The Bible says when we ask God for forgiveness, he throws our sins into a sea of forgetfulness. That thing does not have to sit on you. Forgive quick. Don't let it sit on you. The second part of the scripture is not as easy. It says, forgive others as well. 
We got to forgive as Christ forgave us. I'm going to say something. I'm not going to make it sound like it's easy. I heard somebody recently say, forgiveness is easy until you have to do it. Right? Some people out here had, has had things taken from you. You have had things stolen. You have had people try to ruin your life. You have had people violate you in the absolute worst ways. People try to sabotage. I'm not saying that this thing is easy, but I'm saying that the price of not forgiving is way too heavy. It's way too heavy, way too heavy. We recently, we was in a class, the guys were so cool, the guy said, forgiveness is like allowing somebody to live in your, live in your uh, brain rent free, right? <laughs> it's not worth it. One, the Bible tells us if we don't forgive, God can't forgive us. And, we, and I'm telling you, forgiveness is the cornerstone. Us receiving forgiveness for our sin is the cornerstone. It's the cornerstone of, of what we are. We're able to have all the benefits of what it is, the salvation and being a part of the kingdom because of the forgiveness of Christ. Us not receive it, it's not worth the price. There's also a natural price as well. It tears your soul apart. The resentment that builds in, that, that, that feeling, you know what it feels like too, it's icky, it's yucky, it's terrible. It holds you back. It prevents you from growing. It keeps a wound fresh. So, I don't have enough, like I said, a, a forgiveness message will be, you know, once you do that for a full month. But I'm going to give you a couple, of this, a, a couple of areas of things you can do to begin to start forgiving if it's difficult. One, accept God's standard of forgiveness. Don't just brush it off as a suggestion. Accept the standard. I, in my life, I always keep it 100 with myself. I always said, listen, I'm going to be honest with myself if good, the bad, and the ugly. If I see something and it's ugly, I'm going to say it's ugly. Now, I know this is the goal, but I'm here doing the most, but that's my goal. I'm going to go there. I'm not doing right. Don't just accept unforgiveness. Don't call it something else. It's sin. It's sin because you're hurt. It's sin because of everything else that comes with it, but it's sin nonetheless. So one, accept the goal. Call it what it is and understand that the goal is forgiveness too. We're talking about prayer, right? We pray to ask God for forgiveness. We also pray for God for the grace of forgiveness. As I said earlier, our God is a loving God. And he will never tell you to do something that he will not give you the ability to do. So pray for the grace for forgiveness. And you know what? You're going to have to pray twice, maybe three, four, a hundred times. But don't you let go. Put your faith on it. Put the full weight of your faith on that thing. And lastly, don't hold that weight by yourself. That's why we are all here together. You come talk to me, one of the pastors, one of the ministers, one of the leaders, your brothers and sisters, and we will stand with you until that thing is lifted. And I promise you, it will lift. Step five, now I'm behind time. Step five is um, this found in verse 12, and it's do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Step five is pray to overcome sin. I'm going to say something. Just because you give your life to the Lord doesn't mean now you don't sin. For some reason, the world put that standard on us. Oh, you a hypocrite because you sin. Yeah, I sin, but I'm forgiven. How about you? Right? I'm not, no shade, no shade, no, no shade. I'm not saying say that. <laughs> but where did that standard even come from? Right? Like, for instance, like now, now, this is the thing. When I gave my life to the Lord, the Lord actually took some things from me automatically. I had no idea. When I gave my life to the Lord, I wasn't looking to be moral. I was looking for God. Who's God, right? And I ended up, oh, you're God. I'm coming, right? And so the next day, I'm hanging out with my boys as usual. We're driving around the car, listening to Raekwon, listen to the Purple Tape, only built for Cuban links. Listen, don't go listen to it. But if you know, you know. Classic. And we're driving around doing what we normally do. And what we would do in those instances, we would smoke weed. It is what it is. We all, gotta, we all came from somewhere, right? Don't you judge me. Let me read your book. Let me read your old chapters. Let me read your new chapters. <laughs> right? So, yeah, we, so, so we're smoking weed. But this is the thing, though. This is the day after I gave my life to the Lord. When the... I'm about to say blunt. <laughs> when the L came to me, when the marijuana joint came to me, 
<laughs> I have no time to be playing games. I'm sorry. <laughs> when, it, when it came to me, for whatever reason, I took it and I didn't want it. And then I just passed it. You know the old school like movies, like the cowboy movies, and they walk into the saloon and you ain't supposed to be there, and the music stopped and everybody stopped and looked? That's how it was in the car. At the time, I didn't know what was happening, but now I know God took that from me. But let me tell you something. God takes things, but most things we're going to have to walk that thing out. The Bible says we have to walk our salvation out in fear and trembling. And this is something that we must pray about. This is something that we must be intentional about. I got a book full of declarations, right? I pray, God, I want to stay in your presence. I pray for consistency with quiet times. I pray for the mountains to be removed from my life. I am not perfect, but I'm pressing in to holiness. We serve a holy God and he gives it out. He gives it out, but we have to press for that thing. We have to want that thing. We tell ourselves, oh, I'm only human. Stop telling yourself that. You don't beat yourself up, but you press towards the goal. You got to pray, man. You got to pray. So that, so verse 12 was A. We break 12 into both pieces. If I can have uh, Minister Jason, Minister Music come up. Minister Minstrel, come on up. <laughs> Let's give Minister Jason a round of applause. Isn't he awesome? Thank you, sir. I'm going to call this 12B. It reads, for yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. The sixth step is worship. Isn't it amazing how God started with God? How Jesus, he, the format he gave us, the instructions, it starts with God and it ends with God. Worship is powerful. Worship is absolutely amazing. Worship has a way. It's worship, like, like it's, it's, the, it's the, Jesus said, pray. When we up here singing, we're actually praying. Because what we're doing, we're declaring who God is, right? And there's something about Fixing our attention on who God is that has a way of no matter how messed up something is, no matter how, you know, imperfect it is, it's all okay. It may not be okay. The situation is still there, but in your emotions and in your feelings, God's presence shows up and it makes it all okay. We got to make sure that we are worshiping our King. We flew through this message. It's time to get out of here. Listen, and, and it is now 11.30. Pastor Marco, I'm so sorry. For those, right? As we mentioned, prayer is so important. Prayer is just a conversation with God. It's literally that simple. Whether you're a new believer, you can pick up the, the, the tool of prayer and, and utilize it. Whether, you are, whether you've been born again for 30, 40, 50 years, prayer is, is actionable. Prayer is effective. But we have to pick it up and consistently use it. Now, this is the thing. I recognize that there may be some people in this room or there may be some people online. You say, you know what, Minister Brandon, I hear what you're saying, but I don't know this God. But I want to get to know him. I want to give you that opportunity as well. Listen, it's the same thing. It's prayer. Prayer is what even gets us into the kingdom, right? The Bible says that if we believe in our hearts, as I mentioned earlier, we got to believe in Jesus. We got to put our faith in him. If we believe that Jesus, that, 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 that he died for our sins, and it says that we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, that we will be saved, that we will be brought into the kingdom of God. Our sins can be forgiven. That is a new, it's a, it's a new life, it's a clean slate for us to do once again everyone in the room everybody that's online we're going to bow our heads and pray and i want you to repeat after me if you're looking to give your life to the lord you're looking to say i want in i i I want to be a child of god just repeat say jesus i believe you died for my sins jesus take my sins away i believe that you are king And I believe that you are Lord. Save me. 
fill me, direct me, and give me a new life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So now, if that was your first time praying that prayer, you're in this room, please raise your hand. And if you are online, that was your first time praying that prayer, I want to tell you to put like a hand in the chat and I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. And if this was your first time ever praying that, I'd like for you to text the word believe to 475 255 7744. Once again, text believe to 475 255 7744 because you are now born again. You are now a believer. You are now part of the kingdom of God. But that's the start. Now your life begins and we want to help you out. So if that was your first time and you're in this room, I want you to go ahead and out there on my right hand side, we want to connect with you. It's a connect center. We want to talk to you, we want to tell you your next steps. Were you guys blessed today? Were you blessed at home? The altars are open if you want prayer for anything. You want people to stand in agreement with you, right? The corporate prayer. The altar is open. There'll be ministers and people here to pray with you. We want to connect with you. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for your word. We pray, Father God, that the seed that was planted today within the hearts of my brothers and sisters, we pray that no devil in hell, no, no, no birds of the air will pluck the seed that was sown on the hearts of the people. We pray right now, Father, that you protect the word, that this word grow roots in the hearts of the people, and that it bears fruit of a hundredfold within the hearers. We pray even right now that this is a house that prays, that we are a house that connect with God in prayer, that we connect with God in all that we need, and we will build the kingdom of God. We pray this in your holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listen, as I said, the altars are open. Come on down if you want prayer. Be blessed at home. We love you. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed our presentation. Would you consider partnering with us to share the hope of God and the love of Jesus by giving? You can give your gift at klcc.us forward slash give. Thank you for your generosity. Also, we would love to connect with you. So please follow, like, and subscribe to all of our social media platforms, as well as downloading our app on both the Apple and Google Play stores. Be sure to turn on notifications so 